Up to this point, we've used constraints to position components and simulate their actual assembly. But keep in mind the constraints are only a simulation of the assembly, not a true physical interaction between faces of components. In cases where you do want to create a true interaction between components, you can use something called contact sets. To show you how this works, I'll first suppress the constraint between the planes. To do this, I'll right-click on the mate and select Suppress. Note that suppressing makes it so the constraint has no effect, as if you had deleted it. The advantage to suppressing over deleting is that if you ever want it back, all you have to do is unsuppress it. At this point, the wheel is free to move along the axis and interfere with the bracket. To turn on its contact set, I can right-click and select Contact Set. When I do, notice a new icon pops up next to the part in the browser. I'll repeat this for the bracket. And again, the icon appears next to it in the browser. At this point, if I try to move the wheel, notice the contact sets have not taken effect. I still need to tell Inventor to take the contact sets into account. To do this, I'll switch over to the Inspect tab, and notice there's a button to activate Contact Solver. The reason this is not always turned on is because in more complex assemblies, this can be somewhat of a drain on resources, so it's left as a separate control for instances when you need it. For most cases, constraints do just fine for simulating the position and interaction between components. But when you want to see the true interaction between faces of components, this is how you can do it.